Hey YouTubers, I wanted to make another video and come at you today and tell you a few little things that I've done and uh, maybe you would like to do those as well. Uh, in my last videos, uh, you've seen that uh, I had uh, put the little bungees here on the back. The original bungees had, uh, had failed. They had dry rotted and fell off. So I went and got some uh, paracord, that 550 paracord, and I found these little uh, cam locks. Uh, they're kind of like the bungee cord clips, but uh, you just slide your bungee, I mean your uh, paracord in there, and uh, it uses like a little cam locking mechanism right in there. And you can put different size rope or wire or whatever you've got in there and uh, uh, just snap it in place, and if you want to tighten it, uh, you can just pull on this rope right here and it makes it tighter. So, uh, for you guys out there that's tired of fooling with the bungee cords, that's a, a good alternative to uh, using bungee is that uh, paracord and those little cam lock. Anyways, uh, I was in Home Depot and I was looking at their uh, waterproof boxes and uh, I noticed that they had this husky here and it was uh, really reasonably priced uh i think i paid like 15 dollars for this uh it's a huge box you know uh i've just got a bunch of lures thrown in there right now just here and there just throw it in my favorite ones because you know you can't pack a whole lot of stuff when you're kayaking but uh anyways i uh put some of my stuff in there for my plastics and then you know some spinners and some top water plugs and you know some crankbait and stuff and uh anyways uh just wanted to pass that along to you it's waterproof and unlike a lot of the waterproof uh containers most of them have like a lid on the, or a latch on the sides and then one on the front well this one actually uh has a just a big big one on the front so it also comes with this little bitty uh carabiner clip on the end and what i've done is just attached uh, that little carabiner clip with just a little paracord and uh, it fits right down here in this little uh, spot on my kayak perfectly but uh, anyways I wanted to show you where I've got it attached uh, up underneath the bottom of my seat there is like some little uh, like these little bitty round holes I guess there's some sort of bracing well I just took a little eye bolt and screwed it in there and uh, screwed in perfect and I just attached some paracord with it and uh, that way in case, you know, I was to drop it overboard, uh, you know, I won't lose it. And as far as the paddle leash that I made out of like an old uh, cord from like a, a TENS unit or you could even use an old phone cord, uh, I did attach my paddle leash in the same way. I just put a little eyelet and uh, I tied that phone cord on there and then put a little piece of heat shrink tubing on there and uh looped it through, through that eye and uh i used it all last week and it works great uh i did notice that it would twist up uh, on me sometime but that was just because i was twisting it any uh leash would do that and uh anyways if it's too long for you just twist it up it, it stayed out of my way i had no problems with it whatsoever so uh i made my pa paddle leash for free and uh i basically did uh the bungees and the two little cam locks for like under 10 bucks and then like i said the uh the little waterproof box is 15 and then i ran across these two little waterproof boxes uh, and they fit right in that little tray there for your little shotgun and your shells and stuff and i've got it attached to some more paracord and my favorite uh pliers and uh anyways i don't know if you know uh about this uh kayak or not but it's a stealth 2000 uh the one thing that i don't like about this kayak is uh i'm a big guy i'm a six foot one 300 pounds and uh this is a really big kayak but um by the time that you put weight in the back of this thing which i don't have any weight in there and uh I've never been able to sit on that very back seat. Plus, I was scared to sit up there just personally because I can't swim. And I was scared that I would tip over. 
But uh, I'm scared that if I did sit up in there that I, uh, I would take on water because a friend of mine sat on the boat and uh, she was uh, almost all the way to the the very top of where uh, the dry storage is. So uh, anyways, I couldn't imagine trying to sit on that thing and uh, much less trying to put a battery up underneath the seat for a trolling motor. Uh, but I will tell you what I did use that for is... Uh, we did use that for a cooler this weekend, and it worked great. We took some frozen uh, Gatorades and put up under the seat, and they stayed up under there nice and cool all day. We didn't leave till like after one o'clock. Uh, we got there at like eight, uh, and then when I got home and put everything away, I noticed later that evening at like five o'clock, the drinks were still cold. I mean, so anyways, uh, that does make a good cooler. But like I said, uh, I did not want to sit on that back seat because I was afraid that it would not um, hold me up without taking on water. So I decided to uh, take this other little boat seat that I had just laying around. And uh, I thought, well, let's just make a frame for it. And uh, let's just see how that works. So I did. I took this little one by board and I put it in a little notched out place right there. It's on both sides. So I just run me a little one by board across through there and put a little piece of plywood across the bottom. And I made it where the plywood would touch the, the back of the plastic on that back seat. And uh, there's a plenty enough uh, room. I mean, there's at least, I don't know, two and a half inches in between the old seat and new seat. So that does give me some room to lean back in it. And I've never even touched the other, other seat. But, uh, and it still allows you to get in that cooler. I mean, uh, I was able to reach back there and get in that cooler. So, anyways, it worked out much better by moving that seat to that position. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that's not what they intended uh, for you to do. So, it's probably not going to work that well. Well, to be honest with you, it did. It works so much better. Uh, I guess what happened was, uh, it was, it was just too heavy right in the very, very back of the kayak. So it was causing the front just to ride high. So I decided to put that seat there and now it's equaled that weight out quite a bit and it made it a hell of a lot easier to paddle. Um, it just made the kayak handle a lot better and I still had plenty, plenty, plenty of room. I mean, you see, uh. Look at all that leg room. I mean, I could have moved that seat right to the middle of uh, the little thing here, you know, put it right in the very center, and I would have still had plenty enough room, and it would have probably even helped the kayak handle a lot better anyways. But anyways, I like it where I've got it. It gives me plenty of room, and it gives me plenty of uh, area to, like, you know, throw my stuff down uh, here in the floor you know I've got another tackle box I take along with me you know I've got you know a paddle and I've got my net and I've got you know just anything anything that we want to take out we've got room for it now but uh anyways one thing that I did learn by taking this kayak out is this son of a gun is heavy uh, from the factory they say this thing weighs uh, 120 pounds I don't see it. It's the heaviest 120 pounds I've ever seen. So I had to come up with a solution because this thing liked to kill us trying to tote it because it probably weighs, I don't know, by the time you get all your stuff in there, I'm just guessing probably 160 pounds, I'm guessing, with that seat and the extra tackle and the nine foot paddle and, you know, all the heavy stuff that's in it. Probably 150, 60 pounds easy. Uh, so uh, we had to lug it up this hill and down the road for a pretty good way. So I was like, there's no way I ain't doing that again. So I made this. Uh, this is basically, uh, basically this. <laughs> I'll show you. It's uh, just an old mountain bike. 
Uh, it's, it's a 26 inch ladies mountain bike. I took the, the wheels and tires off of it. Someone uh, was getting rid of it on the Facebook yard sale page and uh, I got it for $10. But uh, the wheels and tires were needed. Uh, well, the tires were good. It just needed new tubes put in them. So I went to Walmart and yeah, I didn't buy the cheap ones. I got the new tubes that have the uh, slime in them. So in case you get a puncture, uh, it'll seal it back up, you know, within, you know, if it's a normal size puncture. But uh, I put two new tubes in it. I think the tubes cost me $12, $13. And uh, I went to Home Depot and bought four foot section of one inch tubing. And then I had these little, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but they're kind of basically just like a, a C channel type uh, piece of angle or whatever it is uh, I had two pieces laying around and uh, they already had the holes drilled in it so I was like man that'll work out perfect so I uh, just used those I just mounted it to uh, just welded it to the tubing and uh, attached the the bicycle tires to it and uh, used the same old mounting hardware that the original uh, bike used and uh it to be honest with you uh it stuck out a little bit and i didn't i knew what was going to happen i knew i was going to scrape my leg on it so i was like no nah, before it even starts i'm just going to take a piece of heat shrink tubing and put it over the uh bolt and the the nut that's right there and uh, i'm just going to take a piece of heat shrink tubing and put it over there and melt it on there with uh, a heat gun and uh, sure enough, it worked perfect. I mean, I took and left it a little bit longer and then bent it over. And uh, now it's, you know, it's nice and soft. So, you know, if it did brush up against your leg, it's not going to scrape the hell out of you. But uh, I've got about 50 pounds of air pressure in these tires. They're really firm. Uh, I don't foresee it having any problems. This thing's super lightweight. I'm guessing it probably weighs, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds. Uh, it works pretty, pretty amazing. But uh, the way that I, that you work it is just, uh, you just pick the front of your boat up. I'm going to try to do this one-handed. It's probably going to go too well. You just pick your boat up here in the front, lift it up, and then you just take your leg and you kick the little thing up underneath there and yeah it's a little crooked so you have to go back and straighten it up you just lift your boat up and then fix it and see it's, uh, it's a little closer on this side than the other so you still have to fix that so you just move it over with your leg no big deal So now, I should have put it on the other end because this is the heavy end and it makes it a lot easier whenever you put the wheels up underneath the heavy end. But just for uh, this video and simplicity, I'm just going to show you how it works. But just pick it up and you can roll this thing around. No problem. And you're going to say, yeah, if the tires are leaning, it looks like it's going to break. Well, yeah. I mean, you've got a little bit of side force pulling on that wheel uh so yeah it's gonna it's gonna lean in i mean that's just <laughs> it's just the way that it is you know you're pulling from that one side so you know the cart does lean in uh that's just from uh that little bit of play in the wheels and tires uh i mean the wheels and uh anyways uh but it seems to work good. I've got it on there crooked and uh, I need to uh, take and uh, I'm going to put a piece of uh, this foam. I'm going to take a piece of this uh, foam here and put it across. Uh, just, it's kind of like a, a noodle, but it's, uh, it's for insulation of pipes. And I'm going to put it across that one inch tubing down there and that'll help. Uh, Help it sit on there a little bit nicer and without scratching the bottom of the kayak up. And then also, I'm going to uh, figure out a place to, to tie 
like a ratchet strap uh, and go across from one side of the tubing to the other side of the tubing. And once you ratchet it on there, you're going to be fine. It's just, you know, I've just trying to do it by myself and video record at the same time, you know, and I've still got it on here kind of crooked, but uh, the other end of the bow just needs to be straightened out. But anyways, I've had it on there all day today and I've pulled it around and it works great. So uh, anyways, YouTube, uh, like I said, it only cost me $10 for the bike. I got about uh, $12, $13 in the tubes and uh, let's see, $15 for the piece of four foot by one inch uh, angle iron and uh, everything else I already had and uh, you know didn't cost me much money at all uh, you, you do have to have a welder to weld it up or have somebody that does have a welder luckily I have like a little shop here so I've got a nice little welder over there and uh, anyways YouTube uh, that's my little cart, and uh, I hope this helps you guys out with some cost-effective ideas. Uh, like I said, I just now started getting into this, and, and it's very interesting to me. I had the best time of my life out kayaking this weekend with my wife. Uh, so, anyways, uh, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.